Hello, hello. Um, I've sped this up and I'm going to try and do a voiceover. I'm working on the art journal that I made yesterday and this is the first time I've done anything kind of arty in this way. So hopefully it's going to go well. So the first thing I am going to do is I want to add some book pages and I'm using vintage book page because that seems to work the best with this technique. That's matte mel, um, matte gel medium, sorry. And I'm just applying some to the cover. I've ripped a piece of the book page out that I want to add. So I'm given that a fairly good coat of the gel medium. And then I am going to put that into place and I'm going to burnish it down quite well with my bone folder. So this is very weird. So I'm going to um, just wipe away some of the, the gel and I'm going to lift that back to um, kind of reduce the opacity of it but it wasn't quite ready so I just go ahead and put some more gel medium down ready to place a second piece of book page. Um, you have to let me know what you think of these voiceovers I'm not quite sure but it allowed me to do um, to make the, a very long video a bit shorter so I'm just burnishing that down also. Um, I like to have a little bit of balance but I also like working in three so I've got top left bottom right and now I'm going back up to the top to see if that's ready to peel away and it is. Now obviously when you peel it away um, the gel medium works as a transfer agent and you could actually leave this to dry overnight and remove a lot more of it to form a transfer. It works great with images um, but I wanted some of it left behind so it was kind of collaging and decollaging um, the book cover and I go ahead and do the same with the bottom piece. And just lift that away. You can, like I said, you can remove as much as you want or leave as much as you like. So, still got a lot of wind here in Suffolk in the UK. Um, and just giving that a smooth out. I'm quite happy with how, how that went. Um, I think what I did decide was um, I was having a quick look to see if there were any images that were thinner now they've been kind of removed and I take my gesso now it's a cheap gesso it's nothing special um, you could make your own there are recipes on YouTube if you wanted to make your own and I'm just giving that a coat and you can obviously cover up as much or as little as you like but it does get lighter once the gesso dries so I'm just applying a quite a lot actually um, I wanted this to be fairly neutral in colour, quite plain but some interest, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm just finishing off with the gesso and I'm going to give that a bit of a dry before I move on. Um, but I think I decided that there probably wasn't quite enough book page and interest on there as yet. So once that's dry which still seems to take a long time, even though it's being sped up. Must be almost there now. Okay, um, so I grabbed the book, um, the book again and find an image that I quite liked and um, take the gel medium again. Now obviously knowing that depending on how well it sticks to the page, um, I could end up with just the words on the other side or I could end up with some of the image so I'll just give that a good burnish down. I don't think I leave this quite as long before I peel back. It does have to be reasonably well adhered to be able to do this technique and then I'm peeling, peeling back and as you can probably see it is the words from the other side pretty much that I'm left with um, but that flower that I'm tearing out now, it's obviously the back of that page has already stuck to the book cover, so it's much, much thinner. It's almost like a tissue paper, so I'm just using some gel matte medium to, to kind of stick that into place. And I'm pointing out there that the words are back to front, obviously, which is one thing that does happen if you're creating a transfer using book page with words on. And I'll just give that little a little dry, that gel medium. And now I'm going to get the gesso back out and just go over that. 
it is um it's a bit different doing a the reason I actually had to uh, do a voiceover is because creating this kind of work I almost forgot that I was recording and spent an awful lot of time saying nothing so <laughs> Um, so now I want to do my main kind of decoration for the page and I'd already decided I wanted to use some muslin and some of that, some watercolour paper and a fussy cut butterfly. Um, I wanted the cover of the book to have the feel that I want the actual art journal to have, so um, quite light, neutrals um, and that's an acrylic paint called Sand by Reeves. Um, I'm using quite a dry brush, um, not applying a lot of paint to the brush and kind of making sure I get some texture um, although I, I do decide that um, it's quite dark that's um, a mint mint green and this is a that's also a mint but it's um, shimmer mint or a pearl mint so I'll just add a little bit to give a bit of a colour but not too much again using a dry brush I'm going to give that a bit of a dry this is very strange doing a voiceover <laughs> and you have to kind of anticipate what you were going to do next um, so that's almost dry and before I give this a coat of gesso I'm just using my gel medium to um, place the butterfly onto the watercolour paper just some bits that I've missed or haven't stuck down very well. Going over that again. The completed cover, um, I didn't actually finish it in the video, but it is um, on Instagram if you want to see the completed cover before I possibly use it again. We'll see how this video goes down before I decide whether I'm doing any more art journaling on camera. <laughs> um, so just finishing off that, getting that nice and dry, and then I go back in with my my gesso. Give it quite a quite a liberal coating. Um, it's not a very thick gesso because like I said it is a cheap one. I think that big pot was about five pounds. I'm just removing some of that gesso with a it's a it's a semi damp paper towel um, and just going around the edges again with a bit more and giving that a dry. Gesso obviously dries really really quickly um, when you use a heat tool on it and it does get lighter. Obviously I think I've said that already. So some of the colour does come through. It's not showing up on camera particularly well, uh, but you do you do see some of the colour through that, and I think that shows up probably better on the photograph on Instagram. And the link will be in the description box if you want to go and take a look at that. So. I kind of wanted a bit of colour around the edge and I do go back and do something else to this later so I'm mixing a small amount of paint with um, the it's ground espresso uh, distress ink and I'm just kind of tipping the edges really just kind of giving the edge a really really light amount of colour um, but I do decide later on that that's not quite enough so I come back in um, which again you will see in the final pic photograph. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to finish this um, at the time. I'm going to stop saying um now. And that's the uh, muslin that I'm going to... Or is it cheesecloth? It's cheesecloth. No, it's not. It's muslin. Yep, it's muslin. So it'll bring my cover back in. And you can see those um, transfers are really quite pale. And that was kind of the effect I was going for, but I did decide later on that it needed a little something else. It's a bit easier to see um, the edge in that shot. Um, I decide that the butterfly is a little bit plain, so I, I'm going to collage a small amount of um, book page onto just two of the edges. Um, kind of again working with that balance thing and working in threes. So I'm putting two pieces of book page on um, to kind of counterbalance that butterfly in the centre. Just giving that a burnish down. Um, I'm pushing quite hard to get that adhered to the watercolour paper and just a small amount is left on the right hand side but you see a little bit more of the text on the left hand side and I do kind of leave it at that and again I'm I've, I'm using the gesso that was already on the brush just to, to go over that, I didn't put more gesso on my brush for that. So 
so what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm going to get my gel medium in the right place so I just literally lift up the muslin and put a few little dots with my pencil so I know where I want my muslin to line up and I'm not going to cover up some of that book page that I want to be seen and the other good thing about working directly onto the book page is if I didn't like how it turned out I could have just gessoed or painted over the whole thing and started again so that's some gel matte medium I've got some ink on my hands and some of that comes through onto the onto the muslin I'm just giving a little coat of the gel medium over the top of the muslin and then the final step is to get that butterfly into place and um, I'll go to good old trusty Fabri-Tac for that so I'm not I'm not worried about the edges being too stuck down um, so I'm applying it mainly into the center I don't go too close to the edge Just pushing that down, using my semi-damp tissue again to, to put some pressure on it and it actually um, removes a little bit of the gesso which looked quite good actually but I don't know if you'll see that on the, on the camera. So that was obviously a little bit too unstuck for my liking <laughs> so I've gone back in with my Fabri-Tac. Um, I think this is pretty much where I leave it. Um, but like I said, I do come back to it a short while after I stop filming to um, to add some add something around the edge. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you found it useful. There was a couple of techniques there that you might be able to apply. You can you can use these techniques in your junk journaling, um, art journaling, or any other artwork that you like. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon.